just the three of us. Welcome in to ATB. Did you like that? Did you like that? Rubber shoes? Yeah, Yeah, that's right up. Rubber shoes, Alley. Uh, It's it's the ATB show at atbshow.com. I am Adam. We've got rubber shoes and little shoes in the building. Timmy is still somewhere knee deep in a cocktail on a golf course in Florida. And unfortunately, Scotty Dukes apparently is still knee deep in cold water in his basement. So so hopefully we get him back next week. But in the meantime, you got us and uh, we are here to talk all Boston sports uh, and maybe mix in a little national sports news as well. Uh, If you go to atbshow.com, you can get to all of our socials, including the Rubber Shoes rant and wrap up, which you can find on Instagram every morning. Uh, I know Rubber Shoes hasn't missed a day. Have you still not missed a day? That's correct. <laughs> that's, that's I, impressive. It's been on every day. It, Tyler did it one one morning okay, in my yeah. place, but it's, that, that it's still been counts. posted every day. Yeah, yep. that still counts. And so how many days do you know what number day we're on? It's got to be close to a year. I, right. Uh, Getting there. Probably I another think, like three months or so. I think May. Yeah, May was the first one, I believe. OK. All right. So if you haven't checked it out, it's worth checking out. You don't have to go to, you know, your ESPN app or anything like that. Rubber Shoes runs it down every morning. So whatever you're looking for. Before anyone on ESPN even opens their mouth. (laughs) I'm sure. Most of the time. I I got woken up this morning. Rubber Shoes text at like 515 this morning. (laughs) Hey, Tim, happy 22222 22 22 day. I'm like, oh, my God. That is (laughs) why I have the. That's why I don't answer because I have the conversation on mute for that reason. Yeah. That and. If it's a game's going on and I just hear my phone buzz every like five seconds. And then I'm, tr- then I'm trying to, we're trying to figure out what time we're going to record the show. It's like nine 30 in the morning. And rubber shoes is like, well, little shoes, isn't going to wake up for another three hours. <laughs> I, was like, oh I was up. I was up. I just, I just didn't check my phone. And oh, I went right. to work. Damn, man. I wish I could sleep that late. I used to, I guess. So I uh, got up like at nine 30. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it. So uh, let's start with the, with Boston sports because even though there's some big national stories to talk about. Uh, we'll start with the Bruins. The trade deadline is coming up. Uh, rubber shoes. Let's start with you. What do you think the Bruins could or should or may add at the trade deadline? Um, I think it's going to be another disappointing <laughs> <laughs> trade deadline for the Bruins. They, they never, they never make a splash. Right. They, In the past, like they've made a splash with big names, but they were big names that were washed up and, you know, they they got them like on a deal with their expiring contract that they just played out one year. So um, they they don't really they still are look need something on the second line to go with Pasternak and and Hall. But we um, or if they move Pasternak back up with Brush, uh, Marshan and Bergeron, then they need a, a winger to go with the second line. But I, I like they, they keep, um, if, when Marcia comes back, which his suspension has just completed. So he'll be back for the next game. They have a six game road trip out. Uh, five of the games are out West. And well, I guess technically all six are out West because mm-hmm. Columbus is West of us. But when you think of West coast trip, you think, you know, they're, they'll be in uh, Seattle, Right. LA, all those teams out there and they get Marshan back. So uh, I'm, I'm assuming um, that it's going to be what they did before Marshan got suspended where they had Marshan Bergeron and Craig Smith on the first line with, I think they had Halla with Pasternak and Hall in the second line. And it was working good until Marshan went and screwed it all up. And then Bergeron got the head injury, which I'm glad that we found out that it was not a concussion. He was out because he had a laceration on the head and he needed the stitches to heal before he played again. Mm -hmm. So that's why he was out. It wasn't a concussion, which he's missed a lot of time for a concussion in the past. And so it's glad to hear that that wasn't the reason why he was out, but I, I don't, they need help on defense. They need, um, help on their they actually their, their third or fourth line it's not horrible i i would like to see them get one one key player on the top two lines and i don't know what's out there i i haven't heard any rumors it's it, it's been crickets out there for, i couldn't name a single player 
Yeah, it's been <laughs> crazy. It, there has been no buzz going on for the tr- for the trade deadline, and it's crazy. Maybe that means there's actually going to be something that happens that we it just out of the blue. I really think Don Sweeney needs to make a splash. I think his job might be on the line this season yeah. if they don't make it to the playoffs and and do decent because this team he constructed for this season is not very good. They're about where they should be right at the bottom of the wild card. Hope they, they have a pretty good cushion. They should make the playoffs. They're going to be like the last wild card seed, Mm -hmm. but as a Bruins expectation every year, you expect them to be, in the playoffs and make a decent run. And they're not set up for that right now, but Swayman's looked good. Uh, the last two games he's played, he's, he's looked really good. So, you know, you get a hot goalie in in the playoffs and you can make a run. So that, that makes a lot of people like Claude Julian was ready to get fired. And right. they, Tim Thomas stood on his head and won a championship and kept them, kept them around for a couple more seasons. So for better or worse. Yeah, right. No, yeah. seriously. So, you know, that I, it's no surprise that I don't really follow like the uh, trade deadline for hockey. It it seems a lot quieter than, than some of the other sports. Like you don't you don't hear like like the NBA leading up to it for like three and a half months. You hear yeah. this person going if, here, even this if person's going there. Nothing is that really that available or going on. Like I mean, I'm, I'm still hearing that they might get uh, ISO Joe back. <laughs> Excuse me. Where Sorry. did you hear that, by the way? I I, I read it. Um, I so Joe. It was either I forgot the, he was like there on and the that Celtics. He was gone. It it was on it, it was on some social media that I saw it. Oh, that's that they funny. said that they they have interest in put because they do have some. They cleared out quite a bit to make the trades that they did, so they definitely have some pieces that that could fit in. Yeah. And uh, but why why don't you hear about it in the NHL though? Because in, it's so I, I find it to be I know like people love to follow it, but I find it to be so annoying in the NBA because 90 percent of the things you hear about don't happen. Actually, probably more like 95 percent of the things you hear about don't happen. I wonder why it's not like that in the NHL. Well, for uh, us maybe- around here, the big thing is that the most of the radio stations around here don't really talk Bruins talk. Right. There's, right. there's like one show on one of the stations that will talk it when they're doing good, when they're not doing good, they kind of brush it aside. So we don't get the buzz because no one's really talking about it. But even in the pregame, usually in the pregame shows and stuff like that, they'll, they'll say, Oh, you know, there's, it it, is, it's crickets. And I get, um, the notifications from the NHL.com. And I, I haven't heard usually right now, which I, I, I would have to check. I'm guessing the deadline is like a week away. Yeah, it's. I think they. I think I read that it was two weeks away, maybe, or maybe a week away. Yeah. It's something like that. I think part of it too is when you look at us, like just a sports thing. I think making moves in a sport like the NBA can make a much bigger impact than in hockey. Yeah, true. Like if if like one just you know like say there's a team that's like inching towards maybe being a contender one move of just a solid role player can completely change the team and change the directory whereas like we've seen teams in the nhl be stacked and still like not put it together and suck where i think it's a lot less common yeah i mean i think you could you could argue that with the celtics right i mean you could argue that the celtics added Derek white and all of a sudden they're a little bit more yeah exactly and they're a little bit more of a contender example yeah the trade deadline is whereas oh actually wait a second this must be last like the bruins could get a top 10 player and not much could change and it wouldn't make that big of a difference right that's what i'm yeah i think that's part of it It, it's so weird it's so weird to me because it seems to be the only sport where i mean the nba is really the worst but it seems to be the only sport where you don't have that because like even in the nfl right if you could add um you know a linebacker or something look at the rams look at the rams right right and it, it it makes a huge impact right yeah you could add you know, uh, I don't know, a shortstop in baseball. It could make a big impact. It's a weird sport where you're right. If you, even if you get a big star, it doesn't necessarily translate into 
you know, success or a championship or even contending for a championship. Um, like there's, on, we've seen some seasons like, you know, a lot of like we've seen Sidney Crosby go to like two different teams and it's made no change. Right. That's right. You know, and he very hyped up. I, I, the hype has definitely died down, but yeah, you know, for the time, even I feel like it, maybe they made a big deal of it when it happened. And then it was just silence, you know, R- rubber shoes. If you could add, if money wasn't an option, uh, 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 you know, an obstacle and anybody is available in the NHL, who would you add to this Bruins team? And would, do you think even adding that would make it, con- that person would make a contender? It would be Jack Eichel, North oh. Chelmsford's own. Been, yeah, been Jack years. Eichel. Uh, um, I don't, so what I'm looking here is the trade deadline was yesterday. Oh. So that's even more. Even like, worse. We, we don't even know how professional we are, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Talking about potential trades that are is impossible it because it's trade, over. Trade deadline is scheduled for Monday, March 21st at 3 o'clock. Wow, that was March 21st. Very March, March, it's March it's only February. Oh, March 21st. Okay, okay. <laughs> It's see so yesterday be once again yesterday once again, be in the 21st. Very professional. Very professional. The oh, show geez, is yeah. So yesterday tune being, in for the Boston sports. Stay for the math. <laughs> yesterday being Monday the 21st. I was thinking, okay, yeah, March. Yeah, so March we got a 21st. month. We got we a, month. a month. Oh. <laughs> oh, no wonder we're not hearing anything yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Who cares? Yeah, this <laughs> whole the whole the whole COVID shutdown and, and then they you know, not going to the Olympics now. So that, yeah, right. yeah, so it's screwed yeah. up. I mean, I feel way. like the sport in general has died down with that, you know, speaking of the Olympics, a lot of, Oh God. Did you guys watch the Olympics? Nope. You don't watch the Olympics. Hell Rubber no. Shoes, you got it. You got it. So, shoes. um, it was hard. It's hard for me because I do the updates every morning. So I already know I give the results for everything. That oh already yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Happen. So it's, I, I have, Real trouble watching sports when I already know the result. Yeah, oh, that's hard. That's yeah. hard. That is hard. That is hard. And it's, it's you know, it's the age old thing when the the sports are tape delayed, especially now with the internet yeah. and stuff. It's like it's hard to get into the to get into the Olympics at all. I have to say that like the premier one of the premier sports of the Winter Olympics is like figure skating, and I just I I don't I don't get into exactly. it. I don't yeah. understand I have, it. I don't. So. I mean, I usually watch the Olympics, but it's been hard to. So the Summer Olympics and the Winter Olympics were both in uh, well, the past 365 South, days. It was in South Korea and then in China. So they've been in Asia, know, so yeah. far away. And you, to watch it live, you got to watch it in the middle of the night or right. the first thing in the morning. Yeah. So it was very hard to I like to watch it live. So but back when the whole Tanya Harding and uh, Nancy Kerrigan. Yes, Nancy Kerrigan yeah. thing was going on. So I was in the Navy and we were watching the Olympics that year. We would we had a drinking game going on during the, the figure skating. <laughs> every every time a, a someone fell, we would have to drink. <laughs> so, oh, no. and, and it was a really bad <laughs> figure skating because they were falling all the time. It was, <laughs> so we, we we got our drink on pretty good that night. Oh, wow. Where were you? Where were you uh, stationed? In uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, okay. Uh, I, right. I was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia, but I also uh, at this time I was still just on a ship. But then when uh, my I got married and my wife moved down, we we lived in Virginia Beach. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know you lived down there for a little while. Yeah. Um, yeah, th- that was obviously one, uh, in New England one of the biggest Olympic stories of all time. Probably yeah. in the country is probably one of the biggest Olympic stories of all time. Um. I personally, I loved, I don't know if you guys have Peacock. Do you guys have Peacock? Yeah, I yes. have Peacock. Yeah. yeah. I loved how you could select your coverage, basically. Like, you could watch any sport you wanted at any time, you know, assuming it, you could watch it live if you wanted to. But if you didn't know the results, you could select the, you know, if you wanted to watch bobsledding, you could watch it at 2 in the afternoon on a Tuesday. It didn't matter when it was happening. I, I loved that, and I thought that's a good the first like good innovation in Olympics coverage, being able to sort of do it on demand. Yeah, um, they, so at the last winter Olympics, they, I think, I don't know if Peacock had taken over, but Comcast was doing the same thing. And okay. it, it, it's, yeah, it's nice to be able to know what, 
you know, key on the things that you want to see. Right. And it exactly. just tell it. Yeah. I, I liked it. Um, I, uh, I didn't watch. I, I saw very, very little um, this year. I, it, if on the weekends, when, if the stuff was live, I would, I would watch it. Yeah. But, um, and then the, I really would have liked, I know Tim was watching the Canada, the uh, oh, uh, yeah. hockey game, Canada, yeah. USA, but it, I, when he was, he must have been watching the, the replay of it. Oh no, because no, I think he was watching it live. So that one they must have, because they knew it was two uh, teams in this time zone. They they probably played, tried to play it at a time, at a reasonable would, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, little shoes. What's your what's your uh like most your earliest Olympic memory? Do you have your early like? I- did you I ever watch the Olympics? Don't know if I've ever watched the Olympics. Like ever? other than basketball. Yeah, because I, Mo- I played Mother's Shoes is anti Olympics. I so. personally oh, do, I personally couldn't Olympics? care less than yeah. regardless like of what she thinks. I just don't why is she never been something that interests me in so, general. In this um, household, the my wife is not a normal female. Like oh, I agree with this. So <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain. Of course not. I, of I course think not. I know she what he's talking about, two. and oh I completely God. agree. So, <laughs> the when it comes to like yes. the Hallmark Channel and the you know yeah. watching yeah. American Idol and stuff like that, that's the stuff I watch. She <laughs> hates all. She hates all that stuff. She hates the sappy stories for the Olympics. So I'm the one that gets into that stuff and okay. sits there and cries and watches the the heartfelt stories. She just laughs at me. Yeah, she oh she God, would rather. That's just watch um, i feel like i feel like in half the stuff we watch like of all of us not saying any of us but like she's like i feel like she's sexist half the time towards women yeah <laughs> oh my like god. like if we're watching wrestling and there's women's wrestling on she's like oh god there's no reason they should be doing this these women suck they i can't love wrestle. that they you guys wrestle. are it blowing sucks. up we mother the, shoes we yeah. watched the slam dunk uh no the rising stars game and they had like two women doing it like oh they're cheap they're both awful they shouldn't be doing this this woman oh sucks. my it's very strange. It's very different. Yeah, she it, like the um when she agrees with how we think that like ESPN forces to have female broadcasters on their sports. It she's like, I would love to have a good female, but don't just put one out there because right. yeah. you have to have you know. Play I will the, say that the broadcaster for the Rise of Stars. I don't know who the woman's name was. She was terrible. I will say. So I have to say, OK, so I'd want to get away from bashing mother shoes. So because <laughs> no, I think you guys bad. are going to end up in the doghouse pretty soon. I don't think there's anything. No, it's no she, but she knows she knows and she doesn't care. Here's here's the counter to that, though, because I've, I've thought about this a lot, because when I flip on like the Celtics or something and it's it's Doris. What's her name? Doris um, Burke. Right. Well, yeah. I also she, she, I yeah. think she's very educated, but I think she sucks as a commentator. So. But okay, so but I think about this all the time because when I turn it on and it's her and she's she's with you know some average dude that nobody nobody's ever heard of, and I think to myself, I'm like, well, how many horrible male announcers are there? Like, probably eighty percent of the announcers out there are yeah that are horrible yeah. are men. Hundred percent. So yep. so it's like, well, why not throw in some women? Who cares if they're horrible? Like, they're all horrible. There's probably a handful that are really good, really enjoyable to listen to and watch. The rest of them, I'm like, I could put this on mute and be just as happy if it was right. on mute. I mean, at the end of the day, if someone's horrible, I think we're fine with being able to criticize them for it. And just, yeah. So I mean, there's there's one female out there that um, she's been on the morning talk shows at times. Uh, Trenny Kuznerik. Oh, she, yeah. Around here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So she. Uh, oh, so around here. So she but she yeah, does. She's the, not a uh, world. Yeah. She was doing Olympics coverage, so she because she works for oh, okay. NBC Sports too. So she does. She is, I I love her. She's great. I wish she did more, but I think her um her political views sometimes she talks about them when maybe you shouldn't talk about them, and I think people get the uh. Don't like rub, her for that rub stuff. the wrong way. Yeah. 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 I I think she's phenomenal. I, I wish she would come back to radio. She has a show on the uh, local uh, NBC sports 
New England, Boston, whatever they call it now. It's uh, so she's the host of a show that's on after the uh, simulcast of Felger and Maz. Okay. And she she is great. I I follow her on Twitter. I follow her on Instagram. Everything. I, I'll I think have to go she's check really that out. Good. Yeah. Uh, as far as like sharing politics, though, it's like you got to. I mean, come on, you got to learn from like Michelle Tafoya. I mean, she it basically got booted off of what is it Sunday Night Football because yeah. of her political it, views. Like, I don't care what they are. You just don't share them. It's sports. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly. that's why Kurt Schilling's not in the Hall of Fame right now. Right. Right. It's 100 percent. It's, it's 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 sad that it has to be like that. You should be able to speak how you speak. Right. And what you feel and not get ridiculed for it and blackballed. But I there's mean, also right times I mean, and wrong times. Because that's but but the thing is. Tyler, so that's the, I don't think anyone should country, be losing their job or freedom not being of speech in the is one of the things that that, you know, people fight for your rights in this country for freedom of speech. And and, and they say, oh, yeah, you get the freedom of speech. But really, you don't, because if yeah. you're on the wrong uh, channel, if you're on ESPN and you're talking totally politically how against what they think, then they they fire you, which is unfair. But also at the right. same time, I don't think that. Like, there's no need for you to be talking about that during a football broadcast. But just on the flip side of what you were saying, Rubber Shoes. All right. So ESPN, they go. Somebody goes on and speaks about their mind about politics that ESPN doesn't agree with. So ESPN has the right, though, as a big company, as a corporation to let that person go. Wouldn't you agree with that? Uh, Yes. But so it's the only reason why they're letting this person go is because they're getting fans that are calling in and that's what they they worry and that that's the, how it works though so, that the advertising is going to leave but it's so like i agree it, a thousand we don't percent. we don't have the freedom of speech in this country like we we think we do well i no see i disagree right you and i can we the three of us can sit here and we can say whatever it is we want we can toss it up on youtube and we can people can watch it or not watch it right but if i'm on yeah. espn and i'm getting paid a million dollars for the year Right. ESPN can go, well, I don't like what you said, so I'm going to fire you. It's not that you can't say that. You just can't say it on, on our channel. Um, I think to me, that's that's reasonable. Right. I I agree with what you're saying in that people should be able to speak their mind. I personally, if I was running an organization like ESPN, I wouldn't I would hope that if I was the person who was in charge of programming decisions, I wouldn't fire somebody for speaking their mind. But that being said, yeah. I don't think there's any I don't think that goes against freedom of speech because that's a corporation who's paying well, this person to speak saying, I don't so, like what you're saying. No, I understand. But the only reason why they're doing it is because the people that heard it didn't like what they said. And they called and, you know, either they called an advertiser and said, we're going to stop buying your product if this person stays on and you keep advertising for it. it but that person, if they're on, if they had a platform to do it, would want to be able to say what, how they feel. That's all I'm saying. It, I agree. A company has the right to hire and fire whoever they want. But I think the whole part of the freedom of speech thing is that people that are hearing it, they, they have the freedom to say whatever they want, but because they didn't like what they heard, they're trying to, to get this person fired because they didn't like what they heard. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, I see what you're saying. I see. I mean, I, I, under, I agree that any company it has the right to, you know, if you don't like it, then you don't have to work here for us. Right. You know, I right. agree. Exactly. That. And that's that's the whole the same thing with the vac- vaccination and stuff like that. Every company has the right to make their that's employees right. get vaccinated or not. And if you like it or not, you can uh, find another job with somewhere I mean, else or whatever. We don't have to get in the vaccination thing, but I wouldn't give up a million bucks. You know, but whatever, whatever Kyrie Irving's getting yep. paid every home game, you wouldn't right. catch me giving up yeah. that much and, money. But to, that's to his, not give, that's oh, it's totally, and, absolutely, and absolutely. He 100%. knows the rules, and if yep. that's how he wants to go. Then you know, that's I'm I'm lucky I have it. I mean, I am vaccinated. I I don't believe that people should be forced to, but it's the company's right to, and it. You know, it's although right. in Boston, they've actually um, the unions have fought it and they're actually they haven't won yet, but they've put a a, a hold on it. Oh, really? That, yeah, they can't. for So right now they're the police and fire have been 
kept their jobs. The people that were fighting it have, have still have their jobs right now, and it's in it's actually gonna be heard in court. Wow, wow! And I think speaking the- of fighting, everyone had to fight to stay awake, dur- awake during the slam dunk contest this weekend. <laughs> part of the three day coverage oh. of the NBA All Star Game. Yes, let's let's move on to <laughs> little, that. We little shoes move- is oh. like forget it's- this politics crap. Let's talk about you know what? dunks. <laughs> I it was. I watch I watch the celebrity game Friday night. Watch Rise of Stars. We watch Friday everything. Night. We, we watch. I don't think everything. we've ever wa- ever watched. The, the only all thing three. I missed was the fourth quarter of the the Which game was the best because thing, because probably. it was on too late. It's, yeah, you yeah. know the halftime was so long it it put the the final of the game out of my uh, sleep time. But <laughs> if it wasn't for the slam dunk contest, I would say it was one of my best all-star weekends that I've watched. Yeah. Why was the the slam dunk contest so bad? I mean, if they run out of ideas, like what's going on? Like, it's ridiculous. The the problem is to, in my mind is they put too much pressure on them getting creative. Yeah. And they're trying to come up with this ridiculous stuff instead of just coming out and doing the dunks. They keep missing. You know, they're trying to do something above and beyond and now they're doing it in the first round before you used to you know you do the safe dunks to get scores to yeah. to move on to the next round and then the in the final round you do the you know pull this all the Craziness. stops out yeah, now yeah, they're yeah. trying it right from the start and you know the guys There's are missing a, missing like four or five attempts and it's like I know. there's a lot of issues this is boring <laughs> you know that go into it first like just as an example, this year's cast, it wasn't a lot. Like, there was probably one or two players in that field that would really be considered dunkers. It was just people that happen to dunk in games that can't really do much. And the NBA was desperate because a lot of players like the John Morants, who can do incredible dunks, don't see the need to be a part of it because they've seen how things have gone down. Like, Aaron Gordon had two of the best performances twice in the slam dunk contest and didn't win either time going into Aaron Gordon, Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine have pretty much done every single dunk possible. So it's hard to be original in the first place. Like it, if you compare like, yeah, everyone dunked, but the dunks that were pulled off were impressive compared to like 30 years ago, but everything's been done now. So it's so hard to do something that like one of them just did the Vince Carter dunk when it first happened, it was like the greatest dunk of all time, but now it's nothing. Cause we've seen it. Right. Well, and the other thing, too, is I I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I felt like in the actual all star game itself, there's so little defense being played now that it's like some of those dunks. I would have been like, oh, oh yeah, they, the dunk John, was, had the best dunk of the weekend. Yeah, yeah it was by, crazy. By far, there was better dunks in the all star game than there were at, in the at dunk, slam contest. dunk contest. But I said hands down uh, and this is probably just me being a homer, but hands down the D Brown dunk, my favorite dunk of all time. I mean, where he, you know, put yep. his arm over his face and pumped up his Reebok pumps. I mean, that's probably just me being nostalgic, but that was, that was, that was one like of my favorite be- dunks of all the time. beginning of the showmanship, you know, right. before that. They right. didn't, and then uh, it was Cedric Sabalos, I think the year after, actually put like a, a, a hood over his face to do yeah, the dunk yeah. at the year was, after D Brown did his. Yeah. It was the one year I was like, probably like 2004, where the one dude he put a blindfold on. Missed it, and then the next time you could totally tell that he was looking. Oh, jeez! I it was some white guy. I don't remember his name. Wait, two thousand four. So how old were you? I don't, like, I don't know if it was exactly two thousand four. I'm oh, just guessing. Okay. It could have been. How like old were you in two thousand four? I was one, w- one years old. He, one. <laughs> one. He, okay. So Tyler he, is the YouTube generation. Yes. 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 So just a little of Tyler's background. Oh, let's hear he it. Can, he can name <laughs> every main event match of every wrestlemania so much. Yeah, and name. even more than that but he can name every wow. wrestlemania i think i still can main yeah. event it's wow like, that's insane he, he wasn't alive for like hit 20, me with one 20 hit me with one right now hit me with one right now <laughs> go ahead rubber shoes give him one that he can uh well i don't know so i can't i don't even know if he's telling the truth oh. but uh we'll say <laughs> let's see wrestlemania What's what are we at now? What was what's this I year? I don't know. Maybe thirty seven. Okay, thirty eight. So I don't know. I'll go WrestleMania twenty. Oh, that was oh that one that one we can't talk about because it was Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and Chris Benoit. That's the one that we, can't. Bring we up. can talk about. Yeah, it. I was gonna say, why can't we talk about it? WWE can't because <laughs> one of the people WWE... in the match killed his family. 
Oh, yeah. Jesus. Oh, yeah. yeah. Who they're, did? Chris Benoit? Yeah. 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 Oh, Look I didn't it up. know that. They're that's not like allowed a, that's to say a, his name on WWE. That is a deep wormhole wow. you can go into, Adam. Yeah. You can find documentaries. I'm good. Everything. <laughs> I'm good. It's, I'm good. it's something else. <laughs> All right. He did. So, you I guys, you guys are pulling us into the WWE. It's not happening. You want you start the all the belt you're, show again for God's sake, Adam. Sense. You're you Mike. Oh Mike, no! Uh, oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, let me turn that. Thank you. All right, all right. So back to the NBA. So the All Star yep. Game itself. Uh, well, what was the so the game itself was your favorite part, Rubber Shoes, or did you like any of the other? Uh, stuff? So I I loved the Rising Stars tournament that they had. Yeah. Because they so it was. Um, the semifinals was two. What well, both games were to fifty. So it's like it's you. You're playing to an act. You're not just playing for how long. It's right. You're right. Play first team to fifty wins. Yeah. And then in the finals, it's first team to twenty five wins. And I, which I, I think is the great. finals should have been first to fifty as well. And that, but but the the finals was really good. They changed it up. That so every quarter, whoever won the quarter won money for their charity. Yeah. Oh, you're so talking they, about the actual one now. Yeah. Yeah. So they really uh, went. They really played for something. So they they kind of try like, yeah, there was obviously no defense being played. Right. But, but in really, the fourth one, it was like, really try- someone's going to win. They started playing defense. And yeah. Really true. That's true. They weren't. Curry was, you know, about to break the record and nobody was letting him just take open shots to get it. Everyone was guarding him. He was getting double, triple team. Yeah. I want, I want him to break. AD's 52. That was his shooting performance, though. I mean, oh my god, constantly does it, but it was unbelievable. Yeah, I I was at the fire station, but uh, Tyler and I were texting back and forth watching. It was like (laughs) ridiculous. It It was was unbelievable. Oh my god, and where he shoots from on the floor is just absurd. The one he he took the half court shot and turned around and started walking back. Yes, it went in. Yeah, are you kidding me? I, mean, I don't care. That's not a real game. That's ridiculous. It's insane. That, um, so there's a couple things I could talk about after this uh, about the NBA. It's one is the the all 75 team, and then there was also there's there's been a, a thing on ESPN what they think the top ten should be like ranked wise. For right, the, right, right, right. So I don't know. Did you see any of I, that I, rank I, ranking? Yeah, I saw the ranking. So, oh man, I. I don't know. I I hate LeBron in number two. I gotta be honest. Yeah. I, and, I and hate Kobe, LeBron in number Kobe two. Kobe tenth. Kobe ten I mean, is insane. I, yeah. Once again, my personal belief of the top three is LeBron. I mean, not LeBron. Not LeBron first. Jordan, LeBron, Kobe. Sorry. About to shut the show down. I would go Kareem. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even that big of a LeBron and guy. I don't but know I if still I've put him said, second. I don't know if I've said this on the show. You, you probably know I'm a really big LeBron hater. Yes. And and part of it is because he he could be easily hands down the go I've, I've heard this like 50 times so i'm just gonna sit back the, let's hear it i haven't heard the, it go ahead his his size his ability what he can do he can dominate he should by no means have any question marks next to his name if he had the killer instinct that kobe and michael had like if he had hit their work at, I mean, he has a great worth ethic. I mean, he's, I want to say there's been like jacked and, but seasons where he 100% has had that, like the I, one where he came I back think against his, State. But that his his best season in my mind was his last season in Cleveland. I would say, when, yeah, when he went 20, to the finals with a bunch of scrubs, no, yeah. he actually to 2017 tried. is his best. In, it's like but. he just he quits too easy. The, I, the, I, one one season when he, when he was with Cleveland against the Celtics when yeah. Celtic oh Pierce, when he like Pierce Garnett and, and through like, the garbage game yeah he, no but just, he didn't quit in that game didn't he have like forty seven in that game it was like what's that the same game that Pierce and him went back and forth and Pierce had like forty three forty four and he had like forty seven no there was a there was one where he. Uh, that's not you the can, one I'm you can bring there's, up t- 2011 against the Mavericks instead because that one's easy to go against. I mean, it, there's times where he where he put up he, eight points in the finals. Like, comes out let like, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan. As long as there's time on the clock, it doesn't matter how they could be down by 20. They're going to be out there playing to the final whistle, right? And LeBron will go sit on the bench with with five minutes left in the game. 
Yeah. No, and you're then, right. And then, you're right. 100%. And then walk off the floor with, you know, 30 seconds still left in the game. He'll he'll walk to the locker room. So that's the stuff that bugs me about him. So let me give you let me run down the top 10. So this isn't the NBA did not rank this. This was ESPN that ranked this. Yep. So Jordan, number one, LeBron, number two, Kareem, three, Magic, four, Wilt, five. Bill Russell, six, Larry Bird, seven, Tim Duncan, eight, Oscar Robertson, nine, and then Kobe, 10. To me, okay, so you know that I think Larry should be in the top three. Kobe should be in the top five, hands down in my book. I hate the Lakers. I hate everything that they stand for, but Kobe Bryant was one of the greatest players of all time. There is no question about it in my mind. I I mean, I love, uh, don't get me wrong, I love Bill Russell. I think Will Chamberlain... Wilt Chamberlain was crazy and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was amazing, but Kobe's got to be in the top five. I don't know who you take out of the top five, but I think Kobe replaces for me, probably Kareem. Although people will probably like, I had at that, but I think my biggest problem with that is there's no way Tim Duncan is number eight. Tim Duncan. Oh, are you kidding me? Tim Duncan, definitely in the top 10. You don't think so? Uh... Who do you, who, who do you put in the top 10 except for besides Tim Duncan? Let me, I, I'll have to think. I, would, I think I think Steph Curry belongs in the top 10. So Shaq is 11. He, I don't think he's yet. Durant is 12. Elijah Wan's 13. Dr. J is 14. And Moses Malone is 15. Steph is 16. I'd say right now, so Steph would be like 13, 14. Steph has won three, been to five, I believe. Yes, I think you're right. And he's probably the greatest greatest shooter, shooter of all time. ever no <laughs> i think no i think now it's definitely he's surpassed ray allen oh yeah. there's no question yeah. about it ray allen's that, not ray allen's not jacking up threes from the logo and it, it's so it's also as they say it's hard to i know uh, compare across compare generations. Eras and stuff like that because it's definitely a different game now that i mean you uh Carl Anthony Towns won the three point contest. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> you got you got centers shooting threes. Well, you know, the you... other thing is, too, is that Reggie Lewis, uh, uh, Reggie Lewis, Reggie Miller mm-hmm. and uh, Ray Allen, they're spot up shooters, right? Yeah, they're, they weren't they weren't really taking threes off the dribble. I mean, Steph can do it off the dribble. He can do it. Catch and shoot. He can do it like falling yeah, away he, from the basket he's... from a mile away. It's like ridiculous. Ooh. Yeah, it's uh, wild. What was I going to say? Damn it. <laughs> I so I said, oh, no. I, s- I remembered it. It's on just the, the top 75 as a whole. Um, how do you f- – I've talked to him about it a little bit, but how do you feel with Carmelo Anthony being on the list, but um, there being no Vince Carter, no Penny Hardaway, uh, no Tracy McGrady, or no even like Dwight Howard? So – I would say, first of all, I'm a little biased because I hate Carmelo Anthony with a serious passion. I personally, like, I don't have any issue with Carmelo Anthony. Uh, I like can't him, stand but... him. I can't stand him. I thought, I think he's just a, everybody says he's a great guy. Like, not personally. I obviously don't know anything about him personally. But from a basketball standpoint, he drives me nuts. Um, so I would take him off the list. And Dwight Howard, to me, arguably one of the best big men. In, uh, if you had to pick put him in the se- top 75 or Carmelo, I would absolutely put Dwight Howard. Would the you put him over the other guys I mentioned? Yeah, I, w- I don't, I'm not a big Vince Carter guy. I mean, he was flashy and stuff. I thought he played well, but I don't think he's a top 75 guy. I, I think I would put McGrady in there. Mm, I don't know. Even like See, besides, because uh, I mean, yeah. if he didn't get injured, he probably would be one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, but you can't so really say with, that though. That's hard to yeah. say, right? If the, you say, if he hadn't gotten injured. That's hard to be the greatest. Right, yeah. right, exactly. You've got to have that durability. Yep. Um, and uh, it's so they're all kind of the same type of player. They all were same with Penny, great players. You know? Yeah, they right. Great players. They uh, so did Penny. He I blew out his knee. Didn't Penny, he? Penny didn't win one because Shaq oh, never won no, with Orlando. No, no, he didn't. Yeah, yeah. So right, he blew all his those knee guys, out, and then he went to Vince, the Suns. McGrady, all those guys. They they didn't win. The closest I think was Carter with uh, the Nets, I believe. Yeah. They, uh, did they go to the finals or was that the year before he came? I don't remember. They went. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I think you know, they went in 02 or 03, and I think he came in 03. So I'm, I don't remember. What's kind of crazy to I me wasn't is alive, that. So. <laughs> It, there's not 
like you have seven. Okay. 75 years. You've got 75 players that you put on the list, right? There's not probably a hundred guys that you would say are vying for those 75 spots. It's actually maybe five people on the edge that might've been able to make it onto the list. Well, yeah, I didn't. think when they brought up snubs, those probably like eight people. Right. You know, Right. It's exactly right. So it's like, it's amazing to me how clear, almost clear cut it is. Yeah. The rankings may not be that clear cut. It's very hard. Like you said, to compare eras and, you know, is, is Kobe better than LeBron is, is Kobe better than Wilt Chamberlain? Would he be, you know, I'm not saying he is, but I'm just saying it's very hard to compare them. If you, but to think about how few snubs there are over a course of 75 years is actually quite remarkable. The fact that there aren't, more players that you would think, oh, let's maybe was it, that person was Jason, gets on. Was Jason Kidd. Oh yeah, Jason Kidd was on it. Yeah, he was on the list. Yeah. I this kind of goes into it, but like it's kind of random. Say Kevin Durant does not win another ring, where do you think he, you would put him ending up, like ranking wise? Oh, so say know. he stayed with Minnesota and just finished out his career without. No, a I'm ring. saying say no, Durant, right, like right? how he is right, Kevin Durant right now. Oh, say Durant. How he, how he ends up right now doesn't win another ring. Where would you put him? I mean, he's arguably, arguably one of the greatest scorers of all time. Correct. Right. So, um, it's just the championship thing, but that, yeah. So then it comes down to what does he and, have now? He has two, he has two. And I mean, they're not looked at as the most yeah, prestigious two, rings in NBA history. Right. He was right. Added to an already great team. That right. probably so would have won two, yeah. without him. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, I think it's really hard. That makes it even harder to compare eras because this era right now that we're in is like this, you know, people, the three headed monster teams that you have to have three superstars on the team. It's like, it's all, and 90% of the time it doesn't work. Like, I don't know why people think it always works. It doesn't look at, I mean, the nets, you, when they signed Durant and they signed Harden and, and Kyrie, Everybody's like they're going to win five championships. I mean, the just, egos are too big. I know yep. it's ridiculous. It's and yeah, it's, and injury happens all the well, time. Look, look at L.A. right now. He, it's exactly. like he's just he's like, oh, we're just going to get this name and this name and this name. Guess what? You got to gel together. And one another thing, you need to be younger. They need to than stay healthy. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I I don't know. I, and I, think I will it's really hard to back to Katie. I want to give him props for last year because he took that team pretty far by himself. I, I will say that sometimes this but gets it's lost. Like he's so incredible. It just kind of sucks that like if he, if he had won a ring in OKC and that never happened, how different the, people the would one, look at him. The one thing I think is that, that I know it's the NBA's top 75, but like you also, if you watched KD in the Olympics over the summer, I mean, the dude is like a one man team USA team. Honestly, like the he guy could was, do everything. He could he do, do everything. everything. Exactly. And so, you know, it. I, I don't know. I, it wouldn't surprise me if he added another ring, if he jumped into the top 10, honestly. But I, I'd be surprised if he didn't add another ring, if he so did. One thing that I, so I saw a, a clip of Stephen A. Smith talking about it. And yeah. he he thinks Wilt should be moved down, if not out of the top 10, because he said, really? OK, you, you have Wilt, who was a great scorer, but he went head to head with Bill Russell and Bill Russell had 11 championships and Wilt only had two. So yeah. by that, he's like, he got dominated by another player. So he wasn't even the, like right. he was a great individual player, but he didn't make his teams better. better. Yeah. Cause the same, him, the like, same thing goes like for Russell did guys that played Jordan, like Reggie Miller and Ewing, you know? Right. That's right. They didn't that's that never they... accomplish getting the ring. That's where. So I, as everyone knows, I was a Lakers fan in the 80s. I hated the Celtics. <sighs> and so I, but I respected Larry Bird. And I think a lot of people, they like, they just think of Larry Bird as a shooter. Right. But he was a great defender, yep. great passer. He made the team around him better. That's why I think he, he, I, he always ends up lower in these rankings than he should. He should be higher in these rankings. I agree. Amen. I I would put him in like I, I give the edge to magic just because he had five championships and Brett right. only had three. Right. So that's I, I would say they're neck and neck the same. They're equal as far as the slight ability edge and to magic. everything. It just yeah. because of the extra rings. Yeah. I would, and I would, I give yeah, and to I would magic. say, you know, magic is the 
best player of all time in his position. Well, and he he would play. He could play other positions too. He had to. Right. So one one championship run, Kareem got hurt. He was playing center. I know that was crazy. Yeah. I I agree with you though. I think if you're gonna put Magic four, you got to at least put Bird five, or you yeah. put Magic three and Bird four. I I to me they to me they go together almost. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, it, they yep. they are an era by themselves of uh, of the league, and just like Jordan is right. Jordan is by himself the the early nineties into the two thousands. Bird and Magic are the early eighties to the nineties. Yeah, I mean, there's not one definitive are. like, oh, that's Magic's era, that's Bird's era. Right, exactly. Right. Whereas every other yeah. era, there it's like now it's like oh LeBron or Jordan, Kobe. You know? Right, right, right. I all right, so let's before we put the wraps on the NBA, let's just talk about briefly the second half of the season because we're gonna get into it quickly. The Celtics were obviously on a ridiculous tear at the end, even though they had a really disgusting loss to the Pistons <laughs> to finish out the you know, all-star so break. But I give, you know, that that game was entertaining. More, more credit to Detroit. Detroit oh, 100%. played their ass off that oh, game. Oh, absolutely. So it's like, I know at the local radio stations, they're like, oh, man, see, they're, they're really frauds like we thought they were. They just, see what? it's like, they, they played a good game. It's just, Detroit played out of their mind that night. That's what I oh, was they gonna, did. Absolutely. Like if we won, how good I would have felt. I was going to say like Pistons played so gritty and wanted that win and the Celtics yep. matched it, but just didn't win. Like if they got a win, I'd say like, Hey, they proved they can get down and gritty yeah, they, and oh, the came, cat just opened the door. They had a chance to win it at the end. And I know they, Tatum had a good look. Yeah, he had a good look yeah. at the end of there. All right. So uh, that aside, Right. I don't I think that's an anomaly. I think they still were on a tear. I think they will come out of the gates pretty strong in the second half. Where do you the obviously this is just a crystal ball thing. Where do you think the Celtics land playoff wise? Do you think they they improve their their situation or do you think they're where they kind of are? All right. I'm going to I'm going to bring up the standings. Right so I think the now. Celtics ended in six. Yep. In spot six. Let's see who's ahead of them. So. <laughs> what the cat's They're gonna behind predict Milwaukee, Cleveland, Philly. And it's all tight, you know. Yeah, it's only they're only yeah. like two or four games out of first. Right. They're four and a half out of first. Right. Um so that's a ew, yeah. I don't I, I think so I think they can gain a spot. Yeah. It'll be tough to like Miami's legit. Chicago's legit. Philly's le- well. Philly actually, I don't know. With that trade, they could actually fall. That that trade could have hurt them. And Cleveland's legit. Cle- well, you know, Cleveland's a thing. They're really young. No, they could. They need another piece. They I could think fall. They could fall. Like I could see them falling. I could. Milwaukee, I don't think they're contenders, but they're like a good team. Like they're you know. I I could see Boston moving up. To fourth, uh, yeah, I'd say that's yeah. our ceiling. So that's kind of what now, I thought too. I, I, I think they could make the fourth. I would be real happy if they make it to fourth, and I hope they keep playing the way they did right before the break. They were playing like a team, yes. the team that we thought they could play like, which we that, hadn't seen really that before. Derek ever, White honestly. ad was great ad, great ad. I was the only one. I was excited. And and Tice is a great like Tice is yes. one of those like sort of weird ones that you're like, you kind of forget about. He played his ass off against the Pistons and he gives us depth against like Embiid. If we, yes. come that's, the, that's what I think the, he brought it up last Sixers. week. It's, yeah. yeah. So I, I think the Tice Tice is a sneaky move that actually positions them pretty well. Plus they still have some cap space. I think, don't they, they could add, yeah, we could get back and it's freedom. <laughs> I think. This I, is- oh, I Joe John. Sorry to, I'm sorry to interrupt you here, but I saw a tweet that was hilarious. It was like, some political figure, I think, or something like that, who was trying to make a statement about Ennis Freedom and how he's a good guy, and he completely exposed that he's never watched a minute of basketball because he's like, <laughs> he was like, he was like, think about this, Ennis Ennis Canner sacrificed a Hall of Fame worthy career oh. to fight against China, and everyone's like, dude, what are you talking about? He's a, like, what? Stick to the politics, homie. Stick to the politics. Yeah. Um. I think the Celtics, here's my hot take for the night before we uh, wrap up. I think the Celtics add Isaiah Thomas back to the mix as a, 
as a uh, bench point guard. I he comes like off every, the bench every year. We hear this. It never happens. It's going to happen. This this is the year. He's in the G League. He's he's playing pretty well. I think they add him just in case there's a COVID, you know, scare in the at the end of the season. Where they need I don't to, know why you know, the Lakers let him go. He was doing good. And Peyton Pritchard, I mean, I like the guy. I want to see him succeed. I think he could be really strong, but he's not exactly our, you know, a playoff point guard, I don't think, at least yet. Um, and you could stick Isaiah Thomas in there and have a really good shot at moving the ball pretty well and even having him put up a couple of points for you off yeah, the that, bench. That's so. the type of player they need. They need that Vinny microwave type player. Right. Coming off the bench and be able to, you know, go off for 10 points and or even five just minutes, like so. I, I think it's I think it's Haslam on the heat who like doesn't play at all, but he's like another coach for that the young core. Yeah. Just to kind of give them some grit and pass knowledge on. So all right. So two we two quick topics before we go. One is I want to get your takes on the Juwan Howard thing real quick. It's Oh, I mean, God, I can, I forgot about, I forgot not, about sh- that already. I'll reserve my opinion until I hear yours. But and then I want to talk about very briefly the um, settlement in the U.S. women's national team. Um, I equal forgot pay, what. Oh, yeah, uh, I saw that. I don't I didn't know what that today. meant, though. So uh, we'll talk about it in a second. So rubber shoes, Juwan Howard. You know, if you haven't seen I the clip to. yet, I mean, I don't know how I, you I think I've done the most research on this. So I, all right. So you go first um, then, Little Shoes. Well, I, little Shoes will go first if he's done all his research. Okay. But let me just set it up, Little Shoes, in case people haven't seen it. Juwan Howard at the end of the game took a swing at the assistant coach of the other team. I can't remember who they were playing. Um, and, Wisconsin. Um, melee ensued. Wisconsin. Thank you. Melee ensued. And now he's been suspended for five games. So, game. so Little Shoes, where do you stand on this? I would first like to start with saying, uh, well, I'm going to say this, but don't like, let me say the rest before I, you, you form Uh-oh. an opinion on what I'm saying here. Uh Oh, uh Oh, all right. I, I don't know how to word this in two parts here, but okay. Uh, you know, what? I'll do it in reverse. So it doesn't sound as bad <laughs> as, as a head coach. There is no reason why you should be setting an example for your team by doing that by hitting someone because you're saying example, the whole team, you're their, you know, guy watching over them. They're going to learn after you. So if you extend an example like that, then it's going to, you know, shit's going to hit the fan. However, I think that media is completely overblowing it and they're acting like I saw them call it a punch and all this. He's, he like grazed them with a slap. Yes. It wasn't like he brutalized this guy. It don't do it. It was stupid and it made no sense. You know, you're the head coach. You can't do that. But the media totally are trying to make it a lot more than it really was. I got a question for you, Tyler, since you said you did all the research. I couldn't find it this morning. Uh-huh. Did it, I know he's suspended for the rest of the regular season. Can he coach in the, the Big Ten tournament? I I believe so. I, I think it was I just haven't. five games. It's that just they suspended it, yeah, it's well, just uh, that's, the, it's the rest of their regular season. Right. Is five right. Right. Games. Right. So, yeah. okay, it's only so. for that. And then he's good. Yeah. So, all right, yeah. rubbish. All right. So I hear you. I, sh- I hear you little shoes. Rubbish. Shoes, okay. Do you share his opinion so, or what? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I, I, I feel the same way. And it was, wasn't a punch. It was not the punch heard around the world. He does. <laughs> he does deserve to be suspended because he, he is the head coach of a college and he needs to, you know, be better than that. And I, I, I- and it's one thing it's college. It's not like NBA. Like these are kids, you know? Right. Yeah. So that for that fact, I, I don't, I was worried he was going to lose his job. I didn't think he deserved to lose his job over this. I think the five game suspension, maybe a little hefty, but that's fine. As, I th- long, yeah, as, he I could, it's... as long as he could coach in the, the postseason, I think it's good. And, um, Forty thousand dollar fine. That's that's nothing, especially he's an ex NBA player. I'm sure he has. He made that in one game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think the the time fit the crime, but yes, I agree that the media totally overblowing this, and um, but I I understand his aggravation. Do you know do you, do you know the whole backstory of why I, he I lost don't? His? I would like I would like somebody oh, yeah, to share I, that. If if he was like not the head coach, I'd understand why he reacted that way. Yeah. So oh, sure. why, they, why why did Wisconsin, it happen in the first place? Wisconsin was up by fifteen with I think there was there was less than a minute left. Yeah. And they called the timeout 
twice when they had the ball to re to to set up a play. Twice so they called timeout. It, they're okay. up fifteen with it's. I want to say there was only like twenty seconds left, and they called a timeout to, to because the shot clock oh, was down to ten seconds. Oh, with only twenty seconds left. Okay. Yeah, it was. It I was. You said with two minutes left. I was like, okay. no, no. It it was under a minute left. Okay, and I want to say it was like around twenty seconds. They called the timeout, and it's like just run. So he was aggravated with that, and I, I he was. It looked like he was walking through the line. Wasn't really gonna shake. The hands of the the coach for the for Wisconsin, and then someone made a comment to him, and he made a comment back, and it just blew out of control at that point. But even then, it wasn't it it definitely wasn't as bad as um, they're portraying it on. As far as the shoes are concerned, I, I'd like to hear what Adam <laughs> thinks. <laughs> uh, well, to probably nobody's surprise, I think he should have been fired. Personally, I th- wow. <laughs> I think I think it was a disaster. I think you are, as Tyler said, you are leading young men, and you should be an example for these players. And I get being in the heat of the moment. I get being frustrated, but you need to have some cool. I'm not saying he couldn't yell at the guy. Absolutely yell at him. Tell him what you think. But to take a swing, and I, you could argue whether it's a punch or a slap or graze or whatever you want to call it a, a but, punch is not open hand okay fair enough so it's a, a slap <laughs> a, sla- a slap makes him sound like a wuss to be honest with you but whatever all right it, so it, it, it's for anyone that didn't see the clip he did this yeah which it, was, yeah it almost it was like even, a grab but it, not it like in slow that's motion, what it, though he was swinging. so when i he was saw swinging. it, it yeah, i it thought was like he a, was actually like gonna grab the guy and pull him towards him and he missed him that's what that's it, it looked what like it, yeah, yeah. Looks like and honestly, to me, the reason – so, okay, the initial interaction with the guy from Wisconsin is fine, all right? No, without – before he takes the whack at him, you know, whatever you want to call it, that's fine to me. Yelling at the guy, whatever. As soon as you take a swing and then you continue – now, there weren't additional punches thrown, but – There were he, with all the players, though. With all the players, absolutely. Yeah. And why wouldn't they? Their head coach just took a swing. Why wouldn't they? They're like, oh, this is how it goes. We're doing this. this, Let's go. This this is so, so funny, though, how just society in general has become. But you you think it's okay? No, but you think think of how things were when we were kids. Bobby Knight. Uh, Did he ever take a swing at another coach? He though? I threw can't... a chair onto the court. Onto the court, yeah. Okay, but so that to me he is hit different. Players in the locker room. Well, that yes. Well, and then uh, was his Cheney for um, Temple choked his own player on no, the bench. Ch- Cheney should have been let go too. <laughs> have you seen the? Have you seen the Calipari um, thirty for thirty? Have you? No. Uh, oh no. my God! You have to watch it if. I, well, you guys yeah, are no, those two UMass, guys didn't so. like each other. The, he <laughs> choked out Calipari too. Yeah, he choked yep. out Calipari. And so, anyways, you're you're in a, in many ways you are right, rubber shoes. You are right that from what used to happen in the 80s yeah. and 90s to now 70s, 60s, even you know it's it's absurd how far things go. But you have to again, you have to put yourself in the era that we're in, right? Right. No, oh, no, I agree. That's why, like I said, the suspension was right and the yeah. fine was right and i mean i would have t- i just 20, 20 years ago would have been like what well yeah he right wouldn't, he wouldn't have even had to apologize <laughs> and then and then i saw and then i saw uh espn had a, a a scroll that said should we do away with handshakes at the end of the game come on oh, i saw oh, that we're yeah. really gonna do that that because of one incident we're not gonna do that but that's the- where it all that's what happens that's why we've become to the point where we are now because I know people it, it the same politics everything one th- one thing happens and they overblow it overreact it, I know it you know I it's... so I guess I should clarify what I mean I don't think the NCAA should have fired him I think Michigan should fire him right so the NCAA is the one that levied the the no, I think it actually was uh it was um big it was or the big Michigan 10. Michigan threw the Big Ten. Or the Big Ten threw Michigan. It 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 came from Michigan, but it was it it was kept in the conference. It wasn't to the NCAA. Okay, all right. I I think the school, the university, 
the, the other reason also is not just because you're a you're an example to your players, but you're also at you know in a state at a state university, you are an example for your state, right? I mean, you know, not for nothing, but the highest paying the highest paid person on the payroll of the of Connecticut, the state of Connecticut, is the women's basketball coach for UConn, Gino Oriyama. Yeah. So I would assume Jawan Howard is in that ballpark, maybe not the highest paid, but at least close. Right. And so you're say probably Haba is probably the number one, right. The football coach. Yeah. Right. But you know, not for nothing, but you're the highest, one of the highest paid people in the entire state. You should be held to a higher standard. It's just my opinion. Um, All right. So last thing. I So on that. Yeah. Isn't aren't, aren't we supposed to forgive? Like it, one, one strike, you shouldn't be fired. You know, you can yeah. learn from your mistakes. So do you, the, I guess the question would be, do you fire the guy and then give him a second chance at another university? Not like tomorrow, but you know, let him sit out a year and then, you know, give him a second chance. No, I, I think, I think what they did was fine. Okay. All right. I'm, well, I'm, I'm fine with the so in the now era, I'm fine with what he got. What he got. All right. Ten twenty years ago, you would have been like, just let him play. <laughs> yep. Actually, um, I'm thinking twenty years ago was two thousand two. So maybe it would have had to be like thirty. Thirty years. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the two thousand things started changing going to it kind of it, it, it's mouse it, of the palace so changed I, it all. It did. So it did. Absolutely. I played sports. In Which is like the coolest moment the, in sports history in the eighties, yeah. and the stuff that my coaches did to us as high school kids, they can't even do in the pros to people anymore. Right? Oh, I mean, if you're a high school coach now, you can't put oh, your yeah. hands on a kid, even just yeah, to put it, your arm around their shoulder and say, "Hey, you know, let's let's go, let's move it, and, or whatever." And you the know? thing is, it's like every everything that my coach did to me, I deserved. And that I could own it. I I wasn't a kid that ran home and told my my mom and dad that oh the coach yelled me he grabbed me and and right. you know, got in my face. I it's like I know I deserved it. Yeah. And that's the problem with uh, I don't know if the the kids probably know they deserve it, but the parents find out about it and they're oh my little Johnny he could never do any wrong and you know so yep. I think that's that's what happens a lot of the times that it's the it's not really the kids looking to make a big deal about it but the parents find out about it and then they make a big deal about it it's like honestly it's like almost everything we've talked about today and just about everything in the world there's two extremes right the extreme is basically what happened in the 60s 70s 80s that's one extreme yeah. the the other extreme is what's happening now the right thing is probably somewhere in the middle, right? It's probably like, yeah, you probably shouldn't beat the crap out of your players, but at the same yeah. time, you don't have to pussyfoot I around mean, them either. I think know? back then, so you, especially football practice, like you went the whole football practice without getting a drink of water. Right. Oh, yeah. It was no like, kidding. It was like, oh, you're, you know, you're, in double you're sessions weak if in you the need summer. a drink. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, and they can't even do double sessions of the pros now. I know it's, it's, like, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. They can't. Even, they can. All, well, they can have double sessions, but only one can be in pads. It's. It's right. like it's just <laughs> right. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey, this was a good show. Oh, I want to mention yeah. real quick. I want to mention the. We don't even have to talk about it, but I just want to mention it. The U.S. Women's National Team soccer team was has been. I think has been very well publicized that they've had this equal pay lawsuit. They've been up in arms about the treatment of the men's team versus the women's team. Uh, if you've read anything about it, there is ample evidence that they were treated poorly compared to the men's team. Meanwhile, they won all these world cups and won the Olympics and all this stuff. And the men can't even get out of their own way. So um, they won. A, they got a settlement today for $24 million, which I found to be low. Everybody seems to be it's celebrating absolutely but, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's $24 like, million. It's like $20 you, to them. Right. And, and per player, it's probably nothing. I mean, nothing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to mention that because I thought it was a, it, at least it was an important moment in sports that said, you know, we, we should treat everybody the same. It, to me, they should treat them based on their success level. Right. I mean, well, you know, that's the, that's how I look at it. One of the problems. So not that I have a problem with what they did. I, I agree that they 
should get what they can. And in that sport, they probably do bring in more money than the men's soccer team. Right. But a lot, a lot of these, like on the college campuses, they say, Oh, uh, we want, you know, better locker rooms for us. It, well, okay. The football team's bringing in millions and millions and millions of dollars to the university. The, you know, the, the soccer team in a division three school, you know, it's, it's not bringing you know, in any money. Th- there's nobody. <laughs> coming. So it's like, right. it, you, yes, I believe in equality for everyone, but you have to like, it has to make sense. Yes. You know, That's the, like if I'm, you know, if I'm working at the local, you know, Joe's, uh, you know, home improvement business that's owned by two people and we're making $8 an hour. And then I, I make the demand that we don't have a good enough break room as the lows across the street. Like, obviously that's a gigantic thing. That's bringing a lot more money than this right. thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, in, in, yeah, I agree with you both. And I, the thing is you can't, especially in college, but you, even in the pros, you can't compare sports right you can't compare across sports because you can't say oh the u.s women's national soccer team should be making the same money as you know tom brady's making you can't you can't say that right right it's 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 a totally different thing they're filling stadiums of 80 90 thousand people the women's soccer team might be seeing twelve thousand people at the peak you know yeah um and those people are paying 15 dollars for a ticket versus 300 dollars a ticket so it's based on what the revenue that that's right. You're That's making right. at the at right. the gate. You know? But the reason so. I the reason I really thought this was a good ruling and also important that they brought it was because they were comparing it to the men's team. So yes. it's like it's I, the same yeah. same sport, um, more success on the women's side than the men's side, not arguably just you know factually. Um, so I thought it was really good that they they closed the book on that. Hopefully, and you know things will continue to improve on that side. Um, one of my favorite athletes of all time, Megan Rapinoe, was the leader of. Oh, I uh, hate her. <laughs> I hate her so much. <laughs> well, you know, it's like my least favorite player of all time. All right. Well, we'll we'll leave it at that. Little shoes. We'll leave it at that. Uh, so I thanks. like Brandy Chastain. She was my favorite. All right. Brandy Chastain. I didn't mind her either. I liked her, too. <laughs> I'm not a big aficionado of soccer, by the way. I don't I don't know anything about that's, soccer. I don't know anything about soccer. If, either, but. That's probably the my favorite female sport soccer like, to, like i i love when the the women's world cup is on i think it's because yeah. i think those those teams play better than the men's team the men's teams they so much diving in the men's soccer sport oh yeah at the elite level and i think that i love the game that they have on the the woman's side yeah well hopefully in the summertime uh summer olympics come around in two more years already holy crap um, we'll see even more. And the world cup is this year. No, I, th- I want to say that the world cup is this year. I think, I think the world cup might be this year. So yeah, I think that sounds right. All right, fellas. It was good. Um, we will be back next week. Hopefully at full strength. I think Timmy's going to be, be back. We should be live. Yes. Live, next live week. and direct. And, uh, if you missed any part of the show, you want to go back and listen to it. It's atbshow.com. Don't forget to check out the rubber shoes rant and wrap up on Instagram, which you can get at atbshow.com. Uh, and follow us on your favorite podcast app. If you want to get the audio version of the show um, downloaded to your phone or your iPad, whenever you want and listen to it, wherever you are, atbshow.com. We'll catch you again next week.